Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. Here today we're going to learn all about making this gel bar um, similar to the gel bar that is found on an iPod, uh, which is the progress bar on your iPod actually. We're going to make that here in Adobe Illustrator and as always the advantage to making it in Adobe Illustrator is that it will be 100% vector. So this is the loading bar we're going to make. If you would like to follow along, hop over to the download section of the site and grab this file right here iPod gel bar start and this is what we're going to start with and if you grab this file you can follow along so what we have here are a few layers one of which is our background which is just a background that I threw together real quick and next we have this color reference layer and those two colors are going to be the two colors of our gradient that we are going to be using in a second and right up here is the multiply layer and that's just this rectangle here so if you have Illustrator CS or newer you can download this file and it will read so the first thing we need to do is select this rectangle and give it this black to white gradient fill we can do that by grabbing our swatches palette and just hitting black to white we've now filled it with black to white let me get the swatches palette out of the way alright we still have this black stroke we just want to come in here and hit the slash key and that sets our stroke to none okay so we have this black to white gradient we need to do some editing for our gradient so grab your gradient palette if your gradient palette doesn't look like this by the way just double click it it may look like this if you just keep double clicking it until it looks like this it gives you maximum information about your gradient that's what we want so select your object then select the gradient swatch here in the gradient palette if this gradient palette isn't open you can come up here to window gradients right there so select the swatch and we are going to make a gradient here that consists of four of these what are called color handles so just holding on the alt or option key and drag out four handles we're going to start with the handles on either side I'm going to grab my color palette which is right here I'm going to set these to 100% black well actually we're going to edit them and make them not 100% black in just a second but what we need to do is make this just a couple little bits of black on either side of our bar here so we're going to drag the white over let's drag it over to 20% and set this one to 80% and the way this little location input box works is basically over to the far left is 0 and over to the far right is 100. Everywhere in between, 50 is the exact middle. Okay, so 80 is 20 away from the right hand side and 20 obviously is 20 away from the left hand side. So there we go. We're going to select this, or actually we're going to make the angle 90 first. So now we just have thin black on the top and thin bit of black on the bottom. Over here, we're going to select the one to the far left and we're going to set that to 10 and that's the bottom and the top which is the one to the right we're gonna to set to five percent black so just like that we have just very light grays on both sides and white in the center we're gonna move the gradient palette I'm gonna move the color palette and we're gonna check out what we've made here you can hardly tell a difference but there is a little bit of gray and you'll really be able to tell when we set this thing to a uh, different blend mode and we start adding stuff on top of it or actually just adding stuff on top of it because this we're not actually going to change the blend mode but select it and come up here to edit copy and then edit paste in front now when you paste in front in Adobe Illustrator it not only pastes the object in front of the object um, when it comes to the layer hierarchy but it also paste it right in place so just for that reason alone I like to use paste in front a lot of times when I'm drawing or duplicating things so I'm just gonna hit paste in front and you can see we have a second base gel layer and this is just right on top of our other base gel layer so I'm gonna come back into my gradient palette whoops I'm gonna select that base gel layer make sure you don't deselect it and we're basically going to invert this gradient and make these little gray color stops just a little bit darker so I'm gonna select the gradient color stop to the far left and make that location 45 and select the one to the far right and make that one 55. So these are just 10 pixels or 10 percent, excuse me, away from each other in the very center. And I'm going to leave the white color stops where they are. I'm going to bring the color palette in. I'm going to select this, the color stop to the right. I'm basically going to select both gray, and I'm just going to up the darkness to 20. Whoops, 20, not 50. Just like that. Now I'm going to come over to the transparency palette, and I'm going to switch this blend mode to multiply what that's doing is it's allowing us to see our little center shadow but if we zoom in we can also see the little bit of gray on the top and bottom zoom in just a little bit let's select that base gel layer that we just 
converted to multiply, and reduced the opacity to 75%. Okay, now we're going to close up that layer, lock it, although we're going to need it to get a selection in a few minutes. We're going to create a new layer here, and we're going to name this layer Fill, because this is going to be the actual fill of the bar. Grab your rectangle tool, set your foreground color to just gray for the time being. We're going to make it a gradient in just a second. And just draw out a rectangle that's roughly the size of that, the base gel layers, these rectangles here. You want to make it a little bit bigger, though, so that we can be sure that our blue fill is going to cover everything. Um, we could just duplicate the layers, but I'm just drawing a new one just because that's the way I am. So we've got our new rectangle here and we want to fill this with a gradient as well. Now this gradient we're going to use our custom color swatches here and you can see I've already converted them to swatches. The way you can convert them to swatches quickly is we're just going to unlock the color references layer. We're going to select the one. Okay, You can see our color swatch has changed. You can just drag this right into the swatches palette. Okay, And I can do the same with the darker blue. And there we go. We've got our custom swatches. That's going to come in handy here because I'm going to select this gradient I'm going to grab my gradient palette, which also has the transparency palette here, but here's the gradient part of it. And I can just drag the light blue down to the white, drag the dark blue over the black. By the way, when you um, do that, whoops, I just did all dark blue. There we go, light blue to dark blue. When you want to replace a color stop, just simply drag a color out of your swatches palette, and when you bring it over one of those handles, you're going to see a little diamond appear inside there. When that diamond appears, it means when you let go of the mouse, it will just switch the color. So I can drag this orange red out, drop it on top of that, and you can see that the blue color swatch is not there. It's just that orange. All right, so just like that, one other thing we need to do is rotate the angle. So the light blue is on the bottom. We want the dark blue on top, just like that. Let's move the gradient palette out of the way. Let's move the swatches palette out of the way. You can lock up the color reference layer again and get back up to the fill layer. Now what we need to do is create that sort of unique shadowing that is on this gel bar and we're going to do that uh, using a tool here in Illustrator called the blend tool. But we're going to start out by creating a circle and giving it well, deselect first your rectangle and we're going to select this deeper blue, this darker blue, okay, and the swatches palette it would be this darker blue from this square. Um, and we want to make it a little bit darker, so we're going to grab the color palette, and I'm going to hit this flyout menu, this little arrow, and switch to HSB, which is Hue Saturation Brightness, and I'm just going to drag the brightness slider down until it's about 50%, just like that. I'm going to move that stuff out of the way, and I'm going to grab the ellipse tool. I'm going to zoom in on my bar here, grab the ellipse tool, and just draw out a narrow ellipse about that big. I'm going to make it not quite so tall, just about that big. Now, once you've got it created, come up here to Effect, go to Blur, Gaussian Blur, and we're going to give it a one pixel blur. So you can see now we have this blurred circle. I'm going to hold down the Alt key, drag out a copy of it, hold down the Shift key to constrain it to a straight line, and just drag it over to the other side of my bar here. I'm now going to deselect, or excuse me, double click. You can deselect that. Double click on the blend tool, which is this tool right beneath the gradient tool. Okay, the hotkey is W. I'm going to double click on it. Now you get these blend options. The default spacing is smooth color. I want to set it to specified steps and set my specified steps to, let's try 25. That sounds like it would work. Grab your direct selection tool, or not your direct selection tool, your selection tool, and lock up this path layer. Okay, that would be the blue fill. Lock that so we don't accidentally select it. And select both of your ellipses. Now grab the blend tool again and just select both the bottom anchor points on both of those ellipses. When you use the blend tool, what I was doing is I was just hitting those bottom anchor points. You want to select corresponding anchor points on both shapes. In this case, we have the same exact ellipse, so I'm just selecting the same exact anchor point, both bottom ones. That ensures that I'm not going to have any kind of crazy turning and twisting going on with my shapes. And that looks pretty good right there. So I'm going to select this blend, and we want to bring in the transparency palette, and let's reduce the opacity. Let's try right around 15%. Uh, that looks pretty good. Maybe a little more. Let's try 20 that looks a little better. We're going to stick with 20. And that's that kind of shadowing that is going on in that loading bar. Now there's a couple little things we want to do here in this fill layer, just little kind of tweaks. First thing is, 
swap your fill with your stroke. So we've got that now dark blue as our stroke. Grab your line tool, set your line weight to two points right up here in the toolbar, and just draw a line that goes all the way across the top of this. You can make it a little longer just to make sure that it goes all the way from one end to the other. We're going to mask it to the actual shape we want it to fit in, and we can just adjust it a little bit to make sure it's going to work. Unlock that colored gradient fill, select it, and we actually want to change the blend mode here to multiply. That's going to allow the shadowing from this multiply layer beneath to show through. As you can see, we now are getting that shadowing. It looks a little funny right now, but don't worry about that. That's just because it's not masked completely to that layer underneath. So we're going to lock up the fill layer, and we're going to create a new layer here called Shine. And this is going to be the Shine. But before we create the Shine, we need to shut off the fill layer. So we're just going to hit the I there to shut off the fill layer. Now with the Shine layer selected, to grab our rectangle tool, set our fill to white. I'm just going to grab my swatches palette, I'm going to drag white out, drop it on the fill swatch there in my toolbar, and I'm just going to draw a rectangle. I want the rectangle to drop down halfway between the center shadow here and the very top of my rectangle. So I'm going to make it about right there. And we need to mask this to our bar. So now all we have left to do really is some masking, and we need to add the drop shadow. So what we're going to do is unlock the multiply layer, select this base gel here on the bottom. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to lock the multiply layer back up to ensure that I don't mess it up. I'm going to select the shine layer, double click next to this thumbnail. We've just created our mask. Now just hit Command or Control F to paste it right in place, and set the fill to white. So there we go. We have our shine showing. Click on this thumbnail to get back to our regular layers. We can lock up the shine layer open up the fill layer and we actually want to mask the entire fill layer so I'm going to double click next to the fill layer and I'm going to hit command or control F because we still have that same white base fill selected command or control F paste that in place I'm going to switch that to white as my fill so we show the entire thing at 100% opacity I'm going to select that layer or select that thumbnail to come back to my normal layer editing mode I am going to lock that layer up and I'm going to unlock my shine layer because I need to Reduce the opacity of my shine a little bit here. Let's lower this opacity to, let's try 30. 30 looks pretty good. Let's lock up the shine layer again. All right, and one thing we need to do here in the fill layer is, well, select the entire fill layer and unlink the opacity mask from the actual layer. That way the opacity mask will stay put while we move this path here. I want to drop that down just a little bit and a little bit too much of it is showing, so I'm going to select it. I'm going to reduce the weight to one point. There we go, that looks much better. Now we're going to lock the fill layer back up. We actually need to unlock the fill layer again and change the mask just a little bit. I want to bring the transparency palette back in. There we go. Transparency palette, I'm going to select the mask and we're just going to pull the mask back to about two-thirds so that the blue fill is showing out to about there and then the rest is still, you know, our loading bar hasn't gotten to there, our progress bar hasn't progressed to that point yet. So I can just select my normal layer and there we've done that. Now we need to add the drop shadow beneath the bottom base gel layer. So to do that, we'll unlock that multiply layer, we'll select this base gel layer, we'll come up here to Effect, Stylize, Drop Shadow. Now the drop shadow I want to add, we're going to hit Preview, I want to switch the mode to Normal, set the X offset to 0, and set the Y offset to 1, and set the Blur to 1 pixel. And the opacity, let's try reducing that to 25, 25 usually works pretty well over a white background, hit OK. Oops, didn't mean to do that and that looks pretty good. One last thing I want to do is come back to the fill layer and, or not the fill layer, the shine layer here. And I want to select the shine layer. I want to unlink the layer from the mask because I want to nudge this shine down just a little bit. Just like that. That looks a lot better. So now I'm going to hit Command or Control 1 and that's going to zoom me out to 100%. And you can see there is our finished progress bar that you would see on an iPod. So that's it for this one. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed it. Please check the site out. That's www.tutvid.com. And thank you very much for watching.